we go again. Game number two. And yep, I'm trying to load in, and there we are. Yep, there we are. There's even the draft overlay. They didn't draft much yet, we just came in time. <laughs> Yeah, Aladdin. They lost the game number one on the Radiant side, Lions on the Dire side with a, a pretty standard draft actually. I mean, Vengeful Spirit with a Visage and a Draw, that's completely standard and it was just insane. I mean, a double source of minus armor with Medallion and the Wave of Terror. The Familiars, super fast again, Scepter on the Viper as well as Henskin on the Visage. An era, of course, he had free farm, he owned his lane, the Chakiro went with like 4 CS out of his offlane. That was really bad news to him, obviously, and I don't know, like, everything worked as planned. The only downside was died that, I don't know, the Puck, Jonas, he died two times in his offline, but that's pretty much all that went wrong. Like, everything else was just small revenge kills, but overall, Lions just traded way, way better, especially Eras farm was just sick. Like, if that game would have dragged on a tiny bit, like, I, I think he could have just rampaged Aladdin with lifesteal for example. But let's see, new draft, new luck. I mean those qualifiers, like a lot of good teams or already established teams meet new teams obviously. Aladdin, as far as I know, as far as I can tell from the lineup, they are a CIS team. Uh, all of them are Russians, but I have no idea how they get to this name. It doesn't even matter. Lions however, the known guys here, Henskin Era, Ape Mother, Seal Kid, Jonas, I think, I'm not even sure, I have to look at our cast schedule do they play today as well on half the TV summer no we have Vega VP polar aftershock hell races no never mind that I I thought we gonna cast them today again somewhere in one of our tournaments but no nope. but still we, we saw them a lot in Battle of Central Europe there they fought quite well there as well but I think they they were even out either way looking at the draft everything quite standard so far. Lions, they focus on whatever they don't want and well, that leaves a lot of space for I don't know, famous calls <laughs> and Elder Titan. Titan is a combination. I thought maybe they're gonna give it the Death Prophet another try, but maybe they made <laughs> too bad experience in game number one. On the other side, we had the Razor and the Brewmaster. Sure, that's a good thing to have out. They Now they bun the Death Prophet. Okay, so Lions, after all, they, they don't want it. The Doom coming out on the other side. Sure. But right now, you could pretty much bun anything that is a core, something tanky, or candidates for the mid, or even the offline. Because with Ancient Apparition, Venomancer, that might, uh, that might settle. Even though Ape Mother, I know he played from, or he plays from time to time a Venomancer mid. But he do usually doesn't do that in games that are quite important. Maybe here, you now they assess the strength of their enemy, and they're like, you guys, I think I can play easily a Venomancer mid now. Let's see. It, it might happen, it might not happen, we will see. Either way, Titan the Elder Titan, okay, with that combination. For the Elder Titan, we need some more magical burst, obviously. Um, so we get some sort of synergy up, that would be cool. Slug. As for Lion side, well, Ancient Apparition, Venomancer, that's a lot of aids, obviously. Uh, a lot of damage over time. If the Ice Blast hits, if the Venomancer, Plague Ward, Scale, plus the Poison Nova, that's quite something. The Slark, as the Farmer right now... About the laning, I'm still not sure. As I said, this might be a support Venomancer, this might be a farm and Venomancer, like they could play both. Picking him early, you never really know what's coming. But let's see. We we will see in a bit, at least. And now, Aladdin's turn. Aladdin's turn to Skyrath go for mage. something. Yeah, Elder Titan, Skyrath Mage. Yeah, I expected something like that, and we might even see see some more. But what else is there? Like, as in, <sighs> hmm. To be honest, I would like to see a Viper now for Aladdin as well. Like against this combination of Venomancer, Ancient Apparition, it's it's quite a nice tanky hero. Like getting some, uh, getting some magic resist up there. Like Wait, even stronger. returning the favor with corrosive skin. That's something, uh, yeah, something you could go for. I could definitely see the Viper Strike as like the only source of Earth magical damage. Shaker. Mm. Earth Shaker. Okay, that one strikes me as a surprise, to be honest. The Prude Mother being banned out for Lions. I don't want to deal with it. I mean, in theory, like we could have seen. I mean, it would have been unexpected, but we could have seen like a Broodmother Lycan combination. Both the heroes weren't banned. 
But sure, I mean, if they would have picked Brod as fourth, then Lycan would have been the fifth ban. And the other way around, so Alliance they knew what they did there. Either way, Witch Talk and Earthshaker coming out here as last one. We're looking at the last bans, and that's pretty much it. Right now, for Aladdin, I don't think they, they can ban anything specific, because the, the current draft of Lions, they have so many opportunities right now. If that's a safe lane slug, they could go for anything in the mid now. Really, absolutely anything. They could even repeat the Viper if they want to get some more aids out there. That would be then Venomancer over time damage. Like, maybe Maledict even on top of it. We have then the Ancient Operation and the Viper. It could work. I don't see why not, but they could go just as well for anything else in the mid. Unless that's a Venomancer mid, then we're gonna see something else now in the offline. That is still an option. And apparently, yeah, they take quite some time to decide this move. Just hope they don't take too much time. Clockwork! Clockwork! Okay. So we have a Venomancer mid, Slark, Witchdog, Ancient Apparition. And a clockwork in the offline, and whoa, Aladdin, they go for a YOLO pick there, right away. Meepo as the fifth one. That one comes unexpected. That one I did not see coming. Maybe that's their attempt to somehow surprise Lions. But then again, I mean, a Meepo and the Ancient Apparition, a Witch Dog, a clockwork, like, I'm actually not sure if you really get this through. Like, the clockwork really ruins your day as a Meepo, and all this AoE damage, Ancient Apparition, Ice Blast, we have the Venomancer. If the if the ancient apparition was with the Meepo, I would say like okay yeah strong draft chilling touch on all the Meepos that's quite a sick thing actually, but <laughs> the other way around I just don't see it happening. If that Meepo is getting hit by ice blast and then some some damage of witch talk, or even clockwork and venom and say so like this this is pretty much it. But let's see. I mean they have strong big fat ultimates. Some nice combos where they can at least take one out. And if lions find themselves in a in a I don't know, not so good position. My mouse is not working. Whoa, over there. Yeah. There we go. Ha. Perfect. What's the camera settings? Not my mouse. I was panicking for no reason. But sometimes there's just a good reason to just panic. Either way, introducing the players really fast for you guys, like the one who's on the toilet that is going to be the Venomancer on Ape Mother in the mid, and I, I love it, like Venomancer in the mid, like as soon as he gets like level 2, level 3, play quotes, you can't really do anything unless you're ranged and you get maybe someone in to clear the, the play quotes, otherwise it's it's just eh. Uh. Either way, he's going to pick up his hero and then the others, of course, Era is found in the safe lane here on the Slark, we have Henskin now. And see a playing the supports, AA and the Witch Dog and Jonas again in the offline. That's actually a quite nice set. I love this one. Isn't that the Mortar Forge set? Wasn't that with some tournament bundle? It looks familiar. Okay, either way, on the other side, ISO playing this time the Tide Hunter. We have feeling good on the Mapo. Well, Ilya Mayugin on the Earthshaker. MBI on the other Titan and the last one happiness. He wasn't so happy last game after all, but still he is now on the Scarab Mage. Let's see how it goes. Is that really a Tight Hunter mid? To be honest, if it's a Tight Hunter mid, I just don't see it happening. That Tight Hunter give it level two play quads and the harass will be just too much, especially he he goes just for two tangos, then going for bottle I'm not sure if that really works out. The upside is you get a fast ravage, sure. That's one thing to achieve, but I'm not quite sure. Aladdin, it, it looks like they're going for dual lanes at the moment. I can't quite believe it. The Earthshaker, I know, this, this looks like an Earthshaker block here around the base, buying the ET some time. He will block here, go back to the base, fountain, and then into the try lane. I guess that's the, the only thing I can imagine. Either way. Some observer boards coming out, the first one here, the other one on the other side, so they see each other at the moment. The rune's gonna be secured, I think the only ones... Oh, there's a haste rune here, but the ancient operation doesn't take it. Hanskin just putting his icy ass on, right on top of it, so nobody else takes it. The clockwork starts with a bounty rune into the game, so the first little advantage goes to lions here. Well, actually both goes in the direction of lions. To be honest, 
with a chilling touch and a haste drone, you can do quite some damage, especially on the Elder Titan. But yeah, we had a block. Oh, did we have a block? Yeah, we had a block. The creeps are quite delayed, but still, he kind of messed up the rest of his block. So the range creep sure is in front, and well, we have Henskin just standing there. I don't know. He didn't really expect that, but at least the ET is close enough to the tower that he can leech the XP, and that's all that matters. Ape mud in the mid. He went for something quite interesting. Oh, but I think we already have a go on the clockwork. But this is a puppy pause right there. Why? Sec. Pion. Whatever that means. The scarab mage is busy either stacking or pulling at the 43 mark. You can pull it directly in if you want. But you might as well just stack it. I don't know if he is aware of the fact that it's not warded. We have to find it out. But this one is interesting. This one is very interesting. It's just a level 1 casket. It bounced once to the creep, so there won't be a follow-up stun, but we have cocks, which means we have quite some right click now on the map one. Oh my god, the cocks are actually too late. He should have just spam clicked it after the pause. In the end, it's not going to be enough. I mean, it's going to drain some mana, it's going to cost him some HP, but that's about it. The witch dog, oh, I'm going for some right click on the Scarab Mage, that's about it. That's absolutely about it, everything that's happening. In the mid, well, this is a venomous scale picked up. Poison sting. That was his level 1 skill. I guess the next point is going into the Plague Wars. That's an uh, interesting way to build it. On level 4 he's gonna start using those Plague Wars, I assume. For now, we have Henskin. Just some right click damage here on the Elder Titan, but he was interested in that XP. In the end, he just got one creep there. Uh, now he's in XP range again. But Henskin doesn't really care at the moment. As long as Era finds farm on the lane, I guess that's just fine. But oh, there's a nice block here by the Earthshaker, but he still he has cocks and everything. He interrupts the clarity as well of the Scarab Mage. And yep, that's pretty much it. Like they're just moving along, dragging that creep wave with them, securing some of the XP instead of getting that double pull against them. That's how it should be. Ape Mother, yep, there's the point, first point in Plague Ward. Another harass on the Titan that will start as soon as he got level 2. There's nothing the Titan that can do. Two minutes rune spawning. We have the Earthshaker in position. And that is the Illusion rune bottom. We have the ET getting uh, the Bounty rune. So this time the rune's an advantage for. Um, for Aladdin. And let's see. I'm just trying to grab my drink. But the problem is, of course, next to my microphone, the only drink I got is empty. Everything else is just too far to reach, so I have to actually get up, which is not good. I don't like that. <sighs> Casas and their tea. Either way. Let's see, in the mid, that Titan, I mean, he didn't grab a rune, so he has to wall a crow for now. Ape Mother, well, it's taking shape at the moment. I'm looking forward when the harass really starts, but oh, clockwork. This was an attempt to block him in, and that would have been interesting. If he was here, then the neutrals and everything else would have done damage on him. That's, of course, bad news. Oh, never mind, actually, the Titan, he got the illusion rune. I didn't see that. I thought, yep, his illusions are here. Going for some harass damage, probably now on Ape Mother, that's it, or helping with the denies, or that way around. Sure, why not? In the meantime, a little clash here, Henskin versus MBI on the Elder Titan, but in the end, oh, does he care? Oh, this is a strange movement, yeah, because the Slark comes from the other side, and he was like, no, you shall not get my pounds. Rocket spam here by Jonas. Oh, and there's even the stun here now, the right clicks. Oh, but the silence coming out before. Oh, this is, this is kind of bad time. It's the second time Jonas is missing his cogs. These level 1 cogs on a Meepo that was super low HP, I think that might have been interesting. Battery Soul and cogs, for both he had the mana. But yeah, the silence coming out, the chaining of the abilities is not working at the moment, as I guess they should do. Well, let's see. Oh, Henskin. And the Titan are actually finding here something on Henskin. He has a gush. Does he go for the gush? Gush, ankle smash. That really, really hurts. The Slark is coming in. The right clicks are coming here. And the Elder Titan is joining as well. There's the Astro Spirit already taking shape. And he wants to get the deny on the creeps, but it's not working. The pounce is landing. And actually, no, but the Dragon Shell will proc at some point. There it comes. He even wants to go on the Slark, but Era. He's level 4, he can't really do anything. Oh, but there, bottling up the anchor smash. No, it's just gonna get that creeps. Era is definitely safe, but they're gonna secure that first blood. Henskin, they're a bit too ballsy on top. There's still a bounty rune to get if the Titan wants to, but it seems like he's heading back for base and the Earthshaker just settles for 
what he gets now in the mid, but the biggest problem of course for him is like, look at these Plague Wards and the damage they do already on him. That's like a third of his HP just by damage over time and three Plague Wards. And these are level three Plague Wards if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, level one uh, as in the dot and of course two Plague Wards, so... Oh well, he's gonna get even more AT in the future. Let's see what else is, is happening here. On the other side, well, the, the Scarif Mage, not so active so far. Not really, he doesn't even have a point in Concussive Shot because he's just level 2. So for now he just settles with that silence. It actually saved the Meepo already, so quite a value point there. But I'm pretty sure with, with the right block of a Fisher, they could get a kill, but I guess they're just interested in getting that meat for some farm right now. The Elder Titan, he got 6 CS, 5 minutes in, well... It's not too different from what we saw in the other game, I guess. But let's see. Ape Mother, what is he going for? We have now the bottle coming, but nothing else. So, for now he just settles with that Wraith Ban. 200 gold on top of it. Th is that really everything he had? Like I'm quite quite surprised. He's 31 and 10. Well, I guess I guess that's it. I really thought he had more farm, but at the moment he is number three right after the clockwork. The Meepo so far is still the better farmer, and now he completely joined jungle, poofing his way through the neutrals. So the Scarab Mage actually gets quite some experience now with the next creep wave. That's guaranteed level three, three and a half for him. And of course, it's good news for Scarab Mage. You want to have that Mystic Flare. As early as possible. The earlier you get it, the more powerful it is. That's why you really want it. Witch Talk also grabbing some experience now in the mid while the Venomancer is doing his Blake Ward jungle job. So at the moment we have pretty much like a I don't know, mirror situation. Oh, but the Meepo? Okay, he's coming out and oh they spotted they spotted this camp and instantly Aladdin they're like, no, you shall not go away. Oh let's see, the battery is sold. So at the moment he can't you now he's using the Ravage here and he's really trying to get it, but oh this cast is really doing a good job at the moment. The clockwork being super low, the tight under he has to go away. And like if Ape Mother was there, that might have been a kill. In the end it's really just okay, Ravage used and that's pretty much it. Oh there's just a nice little I don't know, Arcane Bolt finding here on Jonas, but that's pretty much it. The Clockwork also playing with face food, so he's really, really swift at the moment on everything. But at least they secured somehow, yep, they secured somehow their stack. And thanks to this rocket, with this poof, he completely got that stack kill. So Meepo at the moment, 62 and 2. Like looking at the net worth, yeah, he is leading not by too much to be honest. Uh, Ape Mother is doing quite a good job keeping up with that Meepo, but of course the higher the Meepo gets, the more farm he's gonna get over time. Especially because he will be able to clear out the jungle within no time. But let's see. So far we didn't see any aggressive plays by the Meepo, like some nets or so would have been cool, but he has been quite passive. Now he also has to go back with one Meepo while grabbing some XP in the mid, I guess. Oh, we have the first smoke. There is some action here, but this is still, it's a level 3 Scarf Mage. Like, this is not very impressive. Meepo heading top. Sure. Okay. Lines, they have no idea this is going on at the moment. The only Observer Wars are here in lane. And I don't even know, is there a second one? I think the second Observer Ward is not out at the moment. Oh, it is on Happiness. Never mind there, they want to go here on Ape Mother by the Casket. Buying some time yet. Nice Fisher here. But where is the Tight Hunter's damage there? He's trying to go for that Anchor Smash, but he's just too often stunned here. In the end, the Witch Dog is going to get that Skyrath Mage kill. That's pretty much it. That was... Exactly the situation where you thought like, where is my Ravage? If they had Ravage, this fight would have been so much different. But in the end, they just had a perfect counter initiation here and get get off with that kill in the end. So everything's just fine right now. And it's pretty much the same picture as game number one. All this is happening while Era is completely farming. So they leave Era alone. Just, yeah, just letting him farm like a champ. And the funny part is, I said it on his draw, last time I was like, yo, Era, you got so much free space, go for a Midas, and then just spiral from there. But now, on the Slark, he actually went for that decision. He's like, nobody's stopping me anyway, so I might as well just go for it. Hand of Midas it is, I guess we're gonna see the PTs right afterwards, and then a direct rush into uh, Eye of Scotty. That's what it looks like. As for Ancient Apparition, is that... 
a PT for studs? Or is that also a Midas attempt on the Ancient Apparition just to catch up? I mean, right now he could get quite some gold with the Ice Blast, getting some last hits here and there on Creep Waves. And of course, potentially getting kills on heroes. That might be, of course, interesting. That Earthshaker still waiting for his Arcane Roads. He's close. He's pretty close. Another 50 gold. He can let that tick in if he wants to. Some D warning going on. Yep, that's another 50 gold for the Witch Dog. He's quite happy about that. He only got 12 CS so far. He had the chance to farm a bit in mid, obviously. But right now, they know they just dewatered here, so they can just easily smoke directly in the jungle, going with a full duration. Uh, full duration smoke into the mid. I actually thought they looked for the meeple, but oh, there it is. Look at it. Do they even use something? He's trying to cast something, but nope. You're not gonna get any cast through. He has a titan. He has a double damage. He's using the ravage here. Gosh. Anchor smash. And still, like, it's just not enough. It's just the second ravage. That's completely into nothing. Like, lions, they get a 2-0 trade and they're on top of it. They're like, yo... Your Ravage is down 450 seconds, and that's of course bad news. I mean, that's that's more than two minutes, two and a half minutes down. And with this, this is tier one tower. Nope, they can't salvage it. Like it's pretty low. They have to use the cliff. Now it's coming through. But still, there won't be a deny. There won't be anything. Even though there's a TP by the Titan. And the funny part is, as the Titan the TP's in there, they could have tried to get for off him, but Aether won't have his ultimate till like level 10 or level uh, 11 so let's see now level 10 he's gonna get for go for level 1 ultimate and then level 2 directly in when once he's level 11 and it looks like Midas gaming it really does like overall the game will be obviously a tiny bit faster once all those Midas's are ticken in we're 12 minutes in that's an okay-ish Midas timing for Clockwork Offline. The Ancient Apparition actually is not too far away from that. If you get some last hits actually here on those Ancients, he might have uh, a huge step. Might have taken like a huge step towards this Midas and from there on he's gonna rush I guess into Agana Scepter directly. That would be my guess. Let's see. Era still farming, Midas still ticking, 1.4k gold at the moment, and I said it, he's gonna finish PTs, which he has done right now, oh, Earthshaker, but he still has a Fisher here, there's a Gosh, so he's really slow, but, oh my god, Titan, he's gonna be in there, and, well, they don't, even no need for that Death Ward, who needs a Death Ward if you just can clop him down, that's a Titan, to, again, I saw just not happy in the mid, while Lions, they put so much pressure on the mid, and, also these Ravages, they were just not what they were supposed to be. Also the Earthshaker, did he die before the Arcane Boots? No, he died after it, so at least he achieved something, didn't lose too much in the end. As the Spirit, scouting something out where Ape Mother is farming the enemy jungle, preventing the Meepo from doing his farm there, and Era, fine initiation here on the happiness, on happiness, the Scarab Mage, and that's an easy kill. That's like just some sort of intermezzo. Like, going fast off your lane, getting an easy kill, going back to lane, maybe even pushing some some tower here, some pressure on the tower, maybe. The top lane at the moment completely ignored, like, someone should farm here, someone should grab some experience, and I think maybe Ape Mother is on the way, or he stays here, getting the Ancients stacked in 25 seconds. For now, it's just some dewarding coming out. I mean, D warding, as in D plague warding, not the the real wards like observers in centuries. It's just D plague warding, because Ape Mother leaves everywhere those fancy little things. Let's see. As in graphs, I mean, I have to look because the funny part is the game might be very young, but the problem is lions they farm really fast. So we even see right now like 7.5k in gold. And in experience, we are heading towards pretty much the same. And I don't see it getting any any better. Era at the moment, nighttime, sitting here at the side, having a blink dagger. Is he waiting for anyone to come in? The Tide Hunter, that's the funny part. He's getting quite low here on these ancients. You gotta be careful. If there's like an ice blast flying in, that's bad news. It would be really bad news. That ice blast right now, it would just kill him, but. Apparently, lions—they don't know. Oh, actually, they knew. 
they knew. It came, there's the rocket. That rocket and ice pass, it would have been enough, but let's see. Witch dog. He might still come, but he has to face a ravage, so that is not an easy kill to do. Still, we have some dewarding going on, and with a double damage, that's just two hits required, and that's pretty much it. Still, the Titan, he wanted to settle for this Blink Dagger. He's TPing back. And let's see, does he sell anything? Does he have anything to sell? No. I don't know why he was TPing back there. He could have gotten for, I don't know, these neutrals and finished the Blink Dagger, but he sold something. Oh, he sold the stick! Okay, uh, that's... I don't know. This is this is a really strange move, to be honest. Like, a stick. And it wasn't just a magic one. It was really a stick. A finished stick. That's quite some gold wasted. I mean, selling your stick after five... Oh my god, we have to go here on the clockwork at the moment here. We have no cocks, no nothing. He's going down, but look at this death ward at the moment. He has to interrupt, however, with the nets. And that's another kill here on circuit. Oh, nice Echo Slam, but it didn't really hit anyone. This Ice Pass hit, however, everybody. The problem is Ape Mother is going down. It's a 3 for 2 trade in the end. The Earthshaker is trying to get out, but Era with the Pounce is finishing it. Make that a 3 for 3 trade. Era has to use his Hand of Midas. He's like, yo, guys, I need Hand of Midas. Oh, actually, no. He's heading towards... Use it. There we go. <laughs> Still, a 3 for 3 trade. Better than I expected for Aladdin. But overall, not much too good news. Let's see. Maybe they want to get the kill here on Henskin. They have no idea he's here. It's daytime, however. Like, if he runs in, we have a rotation now of the clockwork. A nice hookshot if the Henskin gives him vision here. Why not? But at the moment, Henskin is rather in position to, I don't know, do something here. Like, oh, Jonas really wants him. Where is the hookshot? No, Cox will be just enough, but with the Ice Blast on top of it, that's an easy kill on the other Titan. The oh my god, how did that not hit? How did that not hit? And he's again using the Ravage. For absolutely nothing. There's the slow. There's another slow by the Ravage. Uh, the Ravage, I say. The gosh. But he's just getting slowed down now. The Witch Dog actually blocking his way. It's still. Oh my god. Meepo coming in. At least they're gonna get the revenge kill here on the Slark. The Titan is still living. It's a 2 for 2 trade at the moment. Ape Mother is gonna be netted up. But in the background, we still have a Casket ready right now, which they could use. And the Clockworker is also around, even though he's really low HP. So in the end, both teams decide to go back. And Aladdin. I really thought, I really thought this Ravage is gonna, I don't know, go into nothing, just like the other Ravages, but, I don't know, it's, it's just not happening, apparently. This time, it was at least one kill they got, but it was not even a kill directly after the Ravage, it was really just like a long follow-up, like even half of a dive into the tier 1 tower. So, let's see, 80 minutes in, Witch Dog. He's not in a farming role, he keeps on buying wards like champion here, so that's kind of unfortunate. I wanted to see some some death ward action on him. The ancient apparition, however, like he is going for them golds at the moment. Like he got 1.2k, which means he got enough for the point booster. Ancients being stacked as well for Ape Mother. And let's see, Ape Mother at the moment, well he's going for, yeah, he's going for Arcanums as well. So we're gonna have like at least two Arcanums by minute... 30 maximum. Ape Mother probably even faster. And whoa, the Clockwork just got a solo kill here on the Scarab Mage. Completely unexpected. I don't know how he fished him. Oh, there's even a ward to D ward, but at the moment there is no ranged guy around. But Ape Mother can just pass by and send a play ward there. But for now, he's just settling with that tier 1 tower. There's still a cliff to be used. They don't forget it. Nope, they use it right away. But look at these play calls. They don't care, and he can even position more into them with a the new creep wave arriving. Yep, that's an easy tower for Ape Mother. The only good thing is, or the only bad thing, would be missing the last but now maybe he's gonna pay for that one. He doesn't have enough mana for the poison Nova or anything like that. Now he's using the mech, he's trying to run away, but there will be a gush in two seconds. So there will be the slow, even improved by the presence of the Elder Titan. So there's the slow, another Fisher in two seconds, even the stun hitting Anchor Smash, and where is it? There's the next Fisher, and oh, a, a bit miss movement of the Titan, and he's using the Ravage, and now the problem is Era is in a nice position. He still has his ultimate, but you gotta be careful. Now they don't have an Echo Slam, something they needed to actually kill the Stark. In the end, they, yeah, they might be able to retreat, but Era is coming back, getting a double kill right here, right there. But let's see, the next Astral Spirit is coming soon. Era, you're really low, my friend. Where's the hit? No, it's not coming. 
he was going for it, but okay, in the end, we still find the Meepo versus the Clockwork, but yep, yeah, he's just hooking out, and that's it, so make that a 1 for 2 trade, Aladdin, they're really trying hard, but the movement of the Tide Hunter was, was really bad, he got like, I don't know, distracted by the fact that there, there was a, like a fissure, and he was clicking on the other side, so he was trying to like move all the other, like all the way around, and that cost them valuable time. They had to commit the Ravage just for a simple 8 mother kill. I'm not sure if that was really worth it. In the end, well, they get at least one kill on 8 mother. He's on level 12, so it was experience-wise kind of worth it. The Meepo, however, right now he should be leading by like 3, 4, 5k, something like that, as a Meepo. But he's not going for the craziest micro of all. I mean, he's with all the Meepos here, but oh, maybe we have to go on a Witch Talk. There's no Cascade. Like to bounce off another target, but yeah, Blink Dagger in front. So much healing at the moment, but the Meepo coming in. Oh, and even the Nats beyond the clockwork. That's the second kill here. And Ape Mother, he gets his ultimate off as well as the Ice Blast, but now he's boxed in in that Fissure. Now everybody's standing around. There is the Mystic Left. So much damage, but he's still somehow not dead. They're gonna get the third kill, but Meepo is going down as well as the Titan the and the Sky of Mage. Hookshot attempt, but again, not hitting. Era is now coming in, trying to do something, but oh, he's gonna die right there. And let's see if the clockwork somehow is gonna follow up. I don't, I don't think so. Make it a free for free trade. Some harassed by the rocket, and that's pretty much it. He's by the way also going for a Gunham scepter. So in in summer we're gonna have like free a Gunham scepter, like as I said, latest by minute 30. This one is gonna be done within the next three minutes maximum. It would have been a bit better, obviously, if. He would have found the kill here that Hookshot landed, but no, it's not really happening. Era, however, the one who just died, like, he goes for exactly what I expected. The second ultimate orb will be done in a second, then he just needs uh, that 1.2, and he has the uh, Discardi finish. That also happens around the 24, 25 ish mark, unless he finds kills before that. Uh, yep, it's a good progress, definitely, but, however, like, in experience, Lions, they dropped something. The last some fights, they were not too favorable, plus they lost a lot of high-level heroes, and, well, in gold, however, they only lost, like, 2.5k in the, the last, what, 5-6 minutes. So, Aladdin is holding on, but they also have a Meepo, and that's that's the problem. I mean, the Meepo should lead by gold and experience if he's there to farm. But let's see. I mean, right now, I was not too impressed by the Meepo, but like when I saw him in fights, like he has a quite impressive or quite aggressive style to go in. Still, we saw Ape Mother, like there was a level 2 Poison Nova that was an Ice Blast hitting on many people, and then some, I don't know, some AoE damage as well by Rocket, for example, and then other sources. At the moment, it's really ticking everybody down. To be honest, I, I, I really want to see... I want to see a pipe ASAP on, on Aladdin. Like, that's an item that is, ha is having such a high value here. Even though it just absorbs the 400, the magic resists and everything, it helps definitely. Like, one of them. I know, having mech and pipe here in this game might be quite interesting. A map, uh, a mech less, of course, just because of the ancient aberration and no heal. But let's see. It looks like they go for Roshan, and this one is going to be undetec undetected. But there is an Ice Pass playing, or is it a rocket? Yeah, this is just a rocket to scout it out. He's pretty low on one of the Meepos now. The Blinks are coming in. Era, in theory, in theory, he could blink right away. But yep, yeah, there is the Aegis. Meepo is TPing out. The Ice Pass is going to. No, it's not going to land on any of the Meepos. So he actually makes it out, and that's it. Lions, they kind of voluntarily give away this Roshan without any. Yeah, without. <laughs> Any attempt to somehow crap the ages. Era could have tried, for example, but yeah, with the Earthshaker around being boxed in there, that would have been like really, really bad news. And let's see. Well, the Ancient Aberration, he keeps on farming. He wants to finish at Arganum Scepter. I actually said 30 minutes, but to be honest, the way he's farming at the moment, 250 gold, and that's pretty much it. There is. Oh, this is just awesome. They have a phone break, so I'll be right back for 30 seconds as well because I need something to drink. Otherwise, my, my throat is just going to kill me. That was way less than 30 seconds because I just noticed that I have my bottle under the desk, which is 
uh, unusual location. I never put it there, but today, uh, for some reason, I did. Either way, that was really fast. So let's see what we got after I have a sip of Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. No, they're not sponsored. Of us. Seventeen thirteen twenty three minutes in Arcanum Scepter almost done here on the ancient apparition. The Arcanum Scepter on the clockwork is done now. And the other Arcanum Scepter is well still sort of in progress, I think. Ape Mother has yeah, Orco Club, stuff of wizardry, that means the plate of alacrity has to come in four hundred. So we have two hundred fifty on the AA and four hundred on Ape Mother. Then we have all the Arcanum Scepter, but at the moment we just found the Earthshaker here, and that was an easy hookshot to set up. Low cooldown, so he could go for something else if he wants to. And with these Arganem Scepter, as funny as this sounds, this Arganem Scepter spam really pays off for Alliance because um, so many of these abilities are actually getting empowered by this. It's it's quite sick. But for now, Mibo is trying to do something. There's an Ice Pass as well as a Rocket Flying, and he's getting quite low from this one. He has to be careful. He's going to get that tower. I don't think they're going to prevent this from happening, but. Yeah, he's trying to micro it out here a tiny bit. He still has yeah a TP score. He didn't go for a BOT build, which is quite a surprise for now. Sure, why not? Ella Titan smoked up with the Titaner. The Titaner, to be honest, one of the most dis disappointing players so far. Like I was looking forward to a Titan Hunter mid, but except for that Ravage bottom, none of the Ravages actually translated into kills, which is obviously bad news. And as for lions, I mean, just by merely laning and plays and trades and everything, they were doing fine. And with this Midas gaming, and now Aganem Scepter gaming, it's just spiraling out of control, I think, for, for Aladdin at some point. I mean, we have three Midases at the moment rolling on lions. The longer this game goes, the more they're gonna, like, feel this difference in XP and gold. I mean, right now we're looking at... 5k gold. If there's not a fight happening or a bad fight happening, you see instantly the craft growing up at all. There's a Titan that going instantly for Ape Mother, but again, he doesn't get Ravage off or anything. Ice Blast, he's dead before he can even do anything, but maybe here the Earthshaker found the AA, but alone he also can't do anything. In the end, the Meepo is just gonna go for the tier 1 tower, but seriously, feeding away your Titan under 4 a tier 1 tower, that's. I guess a trade you can do. If you're desperate, if you just want to have some farm on that Meepo. At the moment, he finished. Uh, he finished that hex on the Meepo. So, at least that's good news. Right now, he can pretty much take take on anyone, one-on-one, -on, -one, on Lion's side, even Era. If he hexes him before he gets the Shadow Dance off, that's an easy kill. And even with the Arcanus, uh, I say, even with the Eye of Skadi, uh, Era will pretty much die. Poof damage, right clicks, hex, prolonging that rotation. Yeah, that, that should be enough. So Meepo at the moment is definitely scary, but unless he really finds someone and then is able to dodge like whatever AoE damage, Ice Blast, Poison Nova, etc. is coming, I just don't see it happening. Right now there's just too much AoE damage going on that the Meepo will survive. And they, as I said, they don't have any effective healing or something on their side. There's no pipe, there's no Mac, no nothing. There was a small attempt of getting a, a Natty on the Venomancer. But that would have been quite a dive. Like, they would have forced the Venomancer into Poison Over, but that one is still for 30 seconds on cooldown. I thought it's up again, but nope, it's not. But let's see. Slark is gonna get here, Era is gonna get that tier 1 tower. He has now on top of his Scotty, well, another 2k gold. We have them actually waiting here around the tier 2 tower. Ape Mother. I don't know if he smells it or something, but at the moment he's just fortifying that tier 2 tower with plague wards. A lot of plague wards. Tons of plague wards. More wards, please. More wards. But I think I think Lions, they do the right thing. They still push at the moment just for the sake of it. But oh, Meepo is coming in as well as the Titan Hunter if they want to. Oh, there's a net. Actually, they find the Witch Dog. This is an easy kill for the Meepo. There's nothing they can do. Four stuff forward. They want to get Era, but Era has a haste run. Jesus Christ. He's so fast. Fishy, fishy, fishy. And out he is. Like, pouncing <laughs> off the high ground and then hasting away. Really bad news. Nice little random fisher in the mid. Probably just for CS purposes. That's pretty much it. I mean, the Earthshaker has at the moment everything he needs to, but... Whoa. Is that a 4 stuff? I think that's a 4 stuff. 
attempt of the Earthshaker. So blink in, echo slam combination, and then force stuffing out. I guess maybe that's what he needs to survive. Even though, I mean, at the current stage with 1.1k HP, uh, Ganem Scepter, Ice Blast, plus anything from the Venomancer, even without the Poison Nova, you are dead. You're just dead. There's just too much AIDS going on. You're gonna tick down for such a long duration. I mean, the duration is 17 seconds on a goddamn like, Ganem Scepter AA. That's 17 seconds, obviously, then you have here Mrs. Poison Nova. Look at it, and that's just getting you into Shatter range. It's quite a cool thing, actually, having both in combination, because usually uh, Poison Nova as such is not lethal. So you can tick down to 1 HP, you can never go to 0, unless there's any other like damage source from Gale or Poison Sting. That's the name, not Poison Touch, Poison Sting. There it is, Poison Sting. And, well, but with the AA ultimate, you can actually get the people to Shatter, and that's the good thing. There's new rockets and ice blasts flying to Roshan, but Roshan still... I mean, they should know, actually. I don't know why he's scouting out Roshan, because... I mean, this is just two minutes off the normal timer still. So he should know that, that he should have the timer, but maybe he was not paying attention. Maybe he was... Oh, I go here on the Earthshaker. He does not have his full stuff right now, but the Meepo is coming in. The ice blast is gonna hit, so that's one kill for sure, but the clockwork is gonna pay of it. And to be honest, this is a better trade for... For Aladdin, if you take that all together, the Urshaker is never that much worth. But Eight Mother is gone in. There's even oh, the ultimate committed. He can TP back if he wants to, and he's gonna survive everything. That Poison Nova, since there's no Ice Pass whatsoever, it's all fine. Little silence on Era, he's gonna just walk it off. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a two for one trade. Eight, Eight Mother there. Nope, that was not really worth it. That was absolutely not worth it. I don't know what he wanted to bait out because that Meepo still had a TP. Even if you jump in and poison over him up, you needed an Ice Blast to make anything work. And it didn't really work. So yeah, nice little strike here by Aladdin and we have to see. For Lions, of course, the problem is that like if Era is not dealing the damage, considering that, for example, Ice Blast is on cooldown or Poison Nova is on cooldown, if Era doesn't provide most of the damage, then they actually lack quite some damage. So the Meepo can really take out two free targets before for example even the damage over time ultimates before they really kick in you can take out two free targets which equalizes the fights all the time just as we saw in, like the last I don't know couple of fights for example that's what worries me at the moment like the direct or instant damage of lions is pretty low over time they definitely win just like I mean Gale, Poison Sting, Poison Nova, Ancient Apparition, Rocket stuff coming in and out some random damage here as well, Casket flying around we have soon um, a Death Ward, I mean this is level 2 already it's not bouncing yet but as soon as he's level 16 we have that bouncing as well I don't know if he's going for a Ghanam Scepter or not I guess it's not really worth it at this point anymore but yeah it's it's ton of collateral damage but it's not the, the most instant one and in that time, Aladdin might actually take a good stand in the fight. What we haven't seen yet so far is... Oh, there's a go with the clockwork. He was just fishing for it, but he didn't really find anything at the moment. Oh, we have five men here around the secret shop. One of them is stacking the ancients. The others are just waiting. I don't know if that's a smoke attempt or if that's just waiting for something, but... Okay, the Mipo's just gonna take care of the ancients, but oh, they're gonna rotate in here and... Oh, again, hookshot, not landing. But the Ice Pass, the Ice Pass is going to connect on so many, even the Elder Titan, so much. And look at all the damage here. The Clockwork, however, being really low. He's the first one to die. It's a two for one trade so far. The Stark with the Shadow Dance staying alive for a tiny bit here. The Meepo is trying to TP out. Nice stuns off the Earthshaker, so he's going to make it out. I can't believe that Poofing in again. Make that a two for two trade as the Scarab Mage is going down. And now the question is, do they follow up? Ape Mother? Nope, that's not really a good idea. And the Meepo is also out of this. Let's see, the Earthshaker, you know, kind of in a bad position. Buy back here on the clockwork. Now with the hookshot, they're going to secure a 2 for free trade while everyone else just escaped. We had the Ravage used, but to be honest, it didn't really affect too much in this fight. And also, the Titan was not in a quite tanky position that he soaked something up. But we have the Meepo still going. And as they steal or try to steal here, something. Ah, oh, there is the gush. If the clockwork dies, obviously, that would be bad news. Gale. Ah, oh, connects on that Meepo, 
using the Manta, but that's pretty much about it. TP out by the Ancient Apparition, so that's way, way too late. Still, the timing is quite okay. They know, okay, they went out and everything, so they couldn't go for Roshan. Problem is, we have a Witch Dog here. 10 seconds on the ward, we have the Clockwork. Hookshot would be ready if he wants to. Well, Meepo's already out. He has to send that one away. It's just too risky. Oh well, one third in, now they have vision, they know exactly what's going on. Hookshot on this Meepo, and it would be easy. Power Threads being out, H is being picked up here, there. oh my god, there it is! Instant hacks. he's gonna get that kill. In the meantime, however, we had Ancient Apparition getting a kill on... Whoa! How did he just get a double kill? And where? That was here? And there. Like where all this was going on in the Roshan, I completely missed how the Ancient Operation just got those two kills. But either way, the result is Mapo. Yep, he sold his PTs, went now for BUTs, got the Ages in. <sighs> I'm not really sure if that trade was worth it. Like overall, this is the funny part. Like overall, this was tons of deaths and forth and back. Kinda surprised that the stats are like still taking this up. I thought there was like a huge pause in between, but it wasn't. Either way, <laughs> back to the whole thing. We're 25 minutes in, guys, here, and let's focus back on on some numbers. We have almost 10k in experience now, still for lions, and even the last fight supports the gold craft now back into lions' favor here. 5k, trying to climb back to the 7.5k they had. Uh, before still that Meepo is getting more active in the game, which I definitely like and now We even have Aladdin maybe taking some initiative it It's been a while that I actually moved towards lions and not just answer it whatever aggression aggression came out from lions But now it seems like the Meepo at least is trying to do some split push trying to get something done and actually he can get a lot of things done he, He's going for the build you also know from like we have for example when he pops well, there's an ice blast on him, but I don't think he will care too much. Of course, he should be careful that, for example, Ape Mode is not jumping in at the same time because then he has a problem. But yeah, beauty's out. Poof, poof, poof. But oh, in the mid initiation here on the Scarf Mage, that should be an easy kill, but he's gonna pay. No, never mind. Not enough damage. Oh, and Ape Mother using his ultimate here. Titan are getting pretty low. He's trying to TP out, and that I think that should be. Yep, that should be just enough. And oh my god, it's getting really low. He's clicking his bottle, he's clicking his bottle, and oh, it's, it's enough. In the meantime, I gotta miss a kill here. It's the kill on Ape Mother. They might be still go on the Meepo, losing his H's. There's an Ice Blast flying directly on top of his respawn, but yep, Seal Cut, he's gonna lose his life for it. So is the ET. Era has to really get the hell out of here. Meepo can't blink in because he is still under the effect of the Ice Blast. If he still had his Blink Dagger there. He would have jumped on error, I'm pretty sure of that. In the end, uh, I'm not quite sure, like, did Ape Mother, yeah, Ape Mother bought back on this one. So it's the second time, no, actually it's the second, it's the second buyback we saw in this fight, and before that the Clockwork already bought back, so this is quite some gold lost for, for Lions here, they give away a lot. And it comes down to what I already said, like, about 10 minutes ago, like these, I don't know, these drafts, I thought they make it just as fast as last game but apparently they they waited a long time the slark is less impressive as the draw we had last game by era so at the moment Aladdin they do a good job keep it exciting let's see the tight hunter he farms he wants to go for that refresher he got now the gold for the perseverance but then of course he's still 1.8 away from the recipe and that recipe will come, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes, 42, 43 minutes in. A double ravage is actually quite interesting because the only one who can do something against it at the moment would be the clock, uh, the, the Slark with the BKB. But no one else actually has a BKB or a BKB on the way. So he's really the only one who is completely immune against it. All the others are completely affected by it. Then again, what's playing towards, uh, which is had a super fast kill here on the Witch Dog. He died while trying to, like, deward or ward whatever that is yeah he just warded this observer but that was from the witch dog directly next to a sentry but unfortunately there is no one who can actually deny it maybe we have another go here the clock bro you gotta be careful oh he's trying where's the net but oh, now he goes for the net 
He should have tried to go for that one a tiny bit earlier, would have caught that clockwork. I think that might have been successful, but Era. Era finds the sky out, made here vision just secure the tight hunter. I don't know, he has one ravage, but he's chasing the I don't know what that is. The Earthshaker is just getting caught out by the clockwork and the Titan Hunter is just running around, not really finding anything. They know they have the ravage, but Ice Blast is not connecting, so it's just a poison over they have to deal with, but the clockwork coming in, trying to buy some time era. Well, there it is. He's using the BKB, but the poofs off, that should be easy. Well, the Earth Splitter is trying to do some damage, trying to do the stun, but it's not really working. We have, yep, Titan Hunter is going down, and the Elder Titan, oh, oh, he's trying to just force that forward, but era. We didn't think they could follow us up, so make that fall down for Aladdin. And <sighs> it was a very awkward approach into this fight. I really thought they, with this semi high and low ground, low ground positioning, and the Meepo coming in or whatever engages, I thought that might be a good start into the fight. But apparently, with this guy of Mage dying just before everything starts, that's already, yeah, a bad thing. To do, but either way, the Meepo might be caught out there. There's the hookshot here, casket. He can't pounce out of this. Ice Blast will fly on top of it, and all that damage it should be enough. Even if he poofs out of this, that would have been the end. Maledict even was up on him, and that's a Maledict level 4. Like the damage he got there, that probably translated into like 500 600 Maledict ticks. So, no way he's getting out. And this was not just a Meepo kill, this was a, a godlike. While well, the Slark is also gonna get the fast Earthshaker kill in the mid without any comment by me, because that was too fast to cast, he just died in a second, jumped and dead. He might even find the Sky of Mage here soon. Either way, it was a godlike streak for 900 gold, now Slark is gonna get like 300 gold on top of it, and with this, they might just go for more, there's, well, he still has the 4 stuff, but Era, perfect timing after the Yule Scepter, and they even find the Titan here, there's a 4 stuff being used, he's dodging that AA Blast, but well, in the end, they're just gonna wait for the next creep wave, and I think they're gonna push here, like, I... I there's nothing they fear at the moment. As long as the Meepo is dead, there's nothing they have to fear. Even though Meepo is farmed, like six slotted here, it's just. Yeah. If he buys back and dies again, that's pretty much game. So Era is doing the right thing at the moment, doing as much damage as possible. The others, however, yeah, they went back. They're just gonna gather, gather those runes here. Bounty here. Well, this one would be a better one for the clockwork, but I guess someone else could pick it up. Nope. Witch Doctor, he's going back to the base. He wants to ward. Ape Mata, however, like his impact in this game was fairly low in comparison to his Viper on the last game. I don't know. The the other eight hero was definitely better for him because he could develop some some right clicks on this hero. His build right now is really just for optimizing the damage, getting everything in in combination with the ice pass, and that's that's pretty much about it. That's his whole task there. And whatever still survives the Arcanum Scepter Poison Nova plus all the other damage over time plus the Sky uh, plus the Ancient Apparition Ice Blast that will be finished off by Era. At least that's the game plan. If they get it through, that's the good question. Right now Roshan number 3 is at hand. We have to see it. In some seconds we see when the timer is coming and... Yeah, we already know it. Roshan spawns in 35 seconds. That's quite a fast respawn here. I definitely like it. So Meepo will be happy about it, but Lions, they know this is going on and they know Roshan will be or might be up soon. Which means they're gonna secure that area around Roshan. That's what exactly what they do right now. New runes are spawning, double damage. This is something for Era. And he's going... Is he going directly for it? Or is he not? Yeah, okay, the clockwork is picking it up. I thought maybe they're gonna give this one to Era and then force a fight. Double damage on Era would have been sick. There would have been like about 350 damage. They see Roshan respawning. There's a stun attempt. It's not gonna connect on anything. And now we have like a, such a standoff situation. Still, the Titan are far away from uh, his refresher. He has exactly the gold for like one of the components, either the recipe or the perseverance. If you had a refresher right now, this fight w would have been or would be quite interesting. Some dewarding coming out by Seal Kit. He's doing it in a rush pit, but there's nothing else. But oh my god, what is the clockwork doing here? Trying to get initiation somewhere on the ET, but it didn't really work. Meepo in the meantime, however, he gets a tier 2 tower. He does the right thing, he forces them away from Roshan. So right now... Oh my god, another hookshot here, again, is completely whiffing, 
And the Meepo is like, yo, I know where Clockwork is, I know where Witch Dog is, it's daytime, I see them. He's gonna go for tier 3 pressure. Now there's an Ice Blast flying, there's air coming, but Meepo, poof, 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 away. Which means now they're gone from Roshan, and that means the Meepo is gonna go into this Roshan. But, look, they're already on the way back here. Like, if he wants to, he might even use... Uh, that hookshot just to the creeps to be faster there. No, he's not gonna use it. However, Meepo is into Roshan. They're just not fast enough at the moment. There is... Oh my god, Casket is flying in. Everything is flying in now. But look at this. Earthshaker, quite a nice initiation. They're gonna get Ape Mother here. But Era, tricking 9 second BKB. It's bearing off at the moment, but still. The Thailand is still surviving. Somehow the Earth are quite nice. And somehow they still survive. I can't even believe this. The Meepo, however, he managed to get back in the base. As well as the ET. The whole thing settles for a 3 for 1 trade. But I don't think they are done. Oh, are they? No hookshot attempt on the ET. It's not gonna land and yeah, they want to keep on pushing They want to go for that push and finish it off because the Meepo he just went back and look at this damage Rushan even being stunned then. Yeah, that is bottle dropped for ages era definitely happy about this one since Ape Mother bought back We might even see a push here. I don't think they they play it super safe They just gonna play it Or maybe I'm completely wrong. 44 minutes in, and it seems like they're not too interested into the push. The Clockwork actually picks up the cheese, so he's gonna be even more eager to go for like those across the hook shots. Then, however, I mean, a gun of Scepter it makes you <laughs> like able to spam your ultimate all the time, the hook shots. But still, like it also tempts to like spam it too often and then not have it in the right second. He missed quite some hookshots since he has the Dalganum Scepter, but then again, well, it's it's coming back up in, in just no time. Still, lines that they hold back, I don't quite understand, because that buyback on Ape Mother, in case they push and in case they have, like, a really bad fight, this hurts them quite a lot. Because then Aladdin might have a chance to, like, sort of, I don't know, force definitely a buyback on Era and everything. If they would f win a consecutive fight, they could even take a Rex or two. And that puts Lions quite in, a, in an awkward position. I mean, it's a lot of ifs on that way. Still, I kind of still have a question mark for that buyback on Ape Mother. But I guess he thought like, okay, we buy back, we fight around Roshan just in case Meepo is back. Anyway, 46 minutes in. The Tight Hunter, where is his refresher? Wait, is that enough gold? 1.8, 1.8. No, he needs at least... 3.6 something like this gold wise but first we have a smoke here and it's not just any smoke not two men three men no it's a full five man smoke and error oh he's trying to fight someone but the earth shaker faster on the blink trigger there right away standard double click toggle and that's it however meantime oh, scarfish he's taking the fast way back to the base they're really scared at the moment they know aladdin if we lose the next fight we have a problem. I mean, Titan at the moment has a buyback as well as DET, but that's it. That's pretty much it. That's all the buybacks we have. The Meepo, however, no, he's... he's having... Whoa. Wait, what? This is... Ah, yeah, this is the refresher for the Titan, not for the Meepo. No, this is refresher on the Meepo. Okay. He's quite rich, to be honest. He's very rich. Wait, that's a refresher on top of... Like all the items he got already. That's quite interesting to be honest. I'm just not sure like Harry really wants to use this refresher. I mean it's a nice gimmick there. You can play around in the base for like in and out pools. Sure you can maybe use it later for I don't know. Just going for a faster push, but that means you have to drop the blink dagger. So I'm 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 not quite sure like where this refresher is going. It doesn't even matter at the moment. They just fortify around their base. Like Elatitan sending his astral spirit somewhere in, getting them the hell out. But lions like vultures, they're just circling around the base, looking for any opening. For example, the Earthshaker, he gotta be careful. Like just one opening by Slark, and Slark doesn't even have like era. He didn't decide to go for a whistle fight, even though he has another slot if that Aegis is down. If he really finds a jump on anyone, instant abyssal plight, then follow up with the pounce, there's not much they can do. Well, let's see where this one 
is going. Meeple Refresher, it's definitely... It's something new. It's absolutely something new. Okay. Oh, there's initiation here on a Titan. The question is now enough damage, yes or no. The right clicks are there. And Era is coming there as well. Just join in the fight. But oh, he gets the Ravage off before anything's happening here. But right now, the Meepo, he needs to find Era. There's still Shadow Dance and everything. Era, he doesn't care. The right clicks are coming through. Casket stunning him for now. But there, Era is being stunned. Well, so far, everybody's just interrupted. But they won't follow up. The, the Clockwork coming back in. But the Force at the moment rescuing them. Era, oh, he lands on happiness. And he's not happy at all with this. This is really bad news. I don't know why. But I think the Meepo could have fought there if they had a nice turnaround. But in the end, Lions, they settled for a 2 for 0 trade. And now the buybacks are coming. First on the Scarab Mage. And, well, we have one on the Titan, if I'm not mistaken. No, he's short in gold. So that's not happening. Oh, they work here on the tower. I don't know that hookshot was not meant for Era. I think it was meant for... Thingy, but oh look what's going on in the enemy base. I completely missed that one like Meepo going for them split push at the moment The clockwork however finding a kill top and Jesus Christ everyone is falling at the moment everywhere They have they try to slow it down They try to make a race with the Meepo But at the moment the Meepo is gonna get another kill here on Hanskin who just came back and now what is happening? Is Meepo actually going here for a base race sort of thing at the moment? He's faster with his pushing and he got two kills. He got the Witch Dog and he got the Ancient Apparition. He's gonna get those Rexes down. Like, they do it at the moment, but there's a Titan going in. There's a Ravage here, but this was even the refreshed Ravage era. He has the Blink Dagger and a tiny bit. Is he going for it? No, he's not. It's even a Refresher on the Slark. There's the Echo just holding him in place for a tiny bit. Full stuff away. Even the BKB baited, and now we have the Meepo on the other side, but Ape Mother, where are the Nets? Net, 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 net. Where are the Nets? Nets is not really coming at the moment. The Clockwork, nope, they're gonna get the kill on the Meepo. We have no buyback, or well, we have a buyback on the Meepo, but I don't think it's coming for now. So ET is down. Uh, the ET is the only one not down, and the Meepo has a buyback if they want to. Era, they didn't get objective damage done though here. So right now, if you take this all by objectives. Oh, never mind, he initiates again on that poor, poor Titan. Uh, wrong guess by happiness, so Era is still hanging around and they just can't kill him. If he's getting out of range, he's coming back with full HP in just a second. Ice Blast or something. If that flies and connects, then Era can just finish them easily off. The entire Lions team is just heading towards that top lane now. They're trying to finish it or bait out something at the moment he settles for rain tracks now he's going for the melee one and look at the damage the damage is quite sick to be honest like what he's doing here oh, again a hook shot into error like that clockwork is like oh man get out of the way jesus christ this is like third time he's hook hooking into error but maybe it's pretty good because they're gonna get the objectives down so who's there to complain they equalize now on racks meepo got one they got one upside is meepo did not have to spend his buyback so right now, Meepo can fight, die, and come back. Which is good news, obviously, but Era coming in. He wants to get the tier 3 tower, and yeah, it's going down. If they want to, with Plague Wars and everything, they could even go for more. Where is the Meepo? Meepo is working bottom. Like, there's an Ancient Operation to kill, and in the mid lane, he could rotate. He could get the range racks. It would come down to another... I don't know, to another trade, but at the moment, like, Urshaker is trying something, 15 seconds on the Echo Slam, it's not really working, they're trying to hold them off, there's a hook shot in, but, oh, this is kind of an awkward one here, but the BKB on, well, that's quite good news, he's diving the tier 4 towers though, and he has no buyback, so Jonas, you gotta be careful, the Meepo, however, I can't believe what I'm seeing here, like, he finished mid, now he's working top, and Lions, Lions is not finding it, Still, they're gonna get that kill on happiness. The Slark actually finished off the Meepo. Meepo still has a buyback if they want to, but there's Ape Mother coming in. And now Meepo buyback. Ape Mother in a very awkward position, getting stunned. He's definitely gonna die, but look how much damage he's gonna get. Like, it's incredible. He's dying, but ET's going down. Tide is going down, and the Urshaka died before. Now, there it is. Mass buyback spam here. The Meepo still holding back. I can't believe it. Did he die? Oh, never mind. Never mind that. He TP'd bottom, made it mega creeps, and now, I can't believe this, now all they have to do is kill that clockwork and then kill Era, but this is a hard task to do, we have one Ravage, there's Ravage number one, yes, and there will be Ravage number two, but there's still a BKB here on Era, no, 
There's a refresh here. He wants to, he's getting quite some damage. There's the hookshot initiation here on Jonas. And with the help of the AA, they're gonna get that kill. So that means, Mega Creeps or not, they have nothing to defend. And Aerof just hopping in, popping instantly that ultimate. Oh, Jonas. Jonas, plane. Plane with fire here at the moment. And Aerof's going directly to for the tier 4 towers. Like, such a good try from Aladdin's, but it's not working at the moment. No Earth but the, no stun for so long. First tier 4 tower to fall. They completely ignore the racks. Of course, creeps and everything. Yes, they are strong, but just too strong at the moment like they're all pretty low but what the hell is he doing no it's not working he doesn't even go for a stun so tier 4 tower down 20 seconds on the sky of mage no this won't be enough there's ape mother just buying some time but oh what a bad bad four stuff he's using the yule scepter he's healing up at the same time but look at all that damage he's dying even in the fountain there's nothing they can do but at the moment what's what's lions doing here like they're falling back because of the back to protection it's just too strong. They just don't have enough damage for the back to protection. Mega creeps. And look at this. Meepo is back. Getting the kill here on the witch talk. Like they're doing it. Aladdin is doing it. This is absolutely amazing. Then Meepo, Manta style, is just going for it. Like, go for it. If he knew that the clockwork was with this low HP around, he would probably go in. But at the moment, he's just playing safe. He wants to push in the mega creeps. That's all he wants to do. Era sticking around. He wants to get the kill here, probably on the Meepo. But alone. Alone. No freaking chance no freaking chance so lions they miscalculated they miscalculated the entire game right now they had the lead they thought they were faster in pushing but mega creeps and they have to somehow settle it we need massive wards to hold those mega creeps back we need so much counter push but it's not happening instead aladdin they're gonna take roshan this is just this is just insane what we see here right now they're gonna get Roshan. This is an easy Roshan. Oh, there's actually a hookshot. They're gonna find that Skyrath Mage here, but yeah, he's gonna finish that Roshan. There's a cheese on the crown, which they could pick up, but at the moment, they're just trying to get out. The Titan are buying just some time with the Ravage, so in the end, Meepo is out, but yeah, they're gonna find the Earthshaker. Still, look at the base. They lost their tier 4 towers. Like, there's nothing. There's just nothing they can do at the moment. Those two supports, they just don't have enough counter push. Just not enough counter push. So Era has to come back. Mito, uh, Mipo is coming back in. And oh my god, this is so bad news, Mr. Clockwork. He's super tanky at the moment, but it's just not enough. If Ape Mother dies, this game is just over. But at the moment, he's just settling for going back to the base. Sure, is the refresher still there? Do we have the refresher? No, refresher was used, so he does not have the BUT. He even... No, he got... What does he have now? Necro was used, Ioscardi, he refreshed everything he could refresh, so we're going back to the scene of the crime. Titan the farming, but all he needs to do at the moment is waiting for cooldowns. We need Refresher and the Ravage back. In the meantime, they're just so occupied with those creeps in the base, they don't even get it out. I just don't see how Lions can push this. Uh, this is... I think this is won by Aladdin. Like, if, if nothing goes wrong for them, the, the Meepo with the strong push and the Mega Creeps here, I mean, they're holding on. They're really trying because they don't want to go in a game number three. But at the moment, this this looks very strong, like a crazy, super intelligent and, I don't know, very witty play, I have to say. This is, this is just amazing. That they actually out-calculate the whole thing, being a tiny bit faster in pushing and the Meepo with his cooldowns and buybacks and everything. That's just amazing. And right now, Aladdin, they have no stress. This this is the advantage of having Mega Creeps on your side. You have no stress. No stress at all. Right now, they could just, I don't know, push a bit here, push a bit there, send in Mantas in, right, like as he's doing right now. They're gonna wait for two Ravages. And we have one is 28 seconds away, and the second one is 60 seconds away. Like some more farm, so everybody has the buyback. That's exactly what Aladdin is doing. They have cheese, ages, double ravage, all the ultimates and buybacks in time for the next fight. That's another two minutes. Then they can go for it. And then I just don't see how, how lions are like defending this. We have not even a cliff ready. Uh, to be honest, I think in theory, in theory, if they would just jump in right now in that base and hammer the throne down with... I know, the help of two Ravages buying some time and everything. No Shaker doing here and there some stuns. They could just take the throne. Like, just go and YOLO on the throne. Of course, that's the risky version. That is something that would just make me happy. But yeah. 
I think they're gonna go for the standard way, and that is just forcing lions out of position or into a certain position just by split pushing and whatnot. So yeah, it's pretty interesting, I have to say. I I definitely love this one. This game is just amazing. Aladdin looked so weak. Oh, but there's initiation here on the Meepo. BKB on and Era is trying to come in. A lot of damage on that Meepo, but he's still protected by the Aegis. He's trying to TP out, but he's going down the first time. There's Ravage number one. No, actually, this was Ravage number two. In the end, they're trying to TP out. Oh, so much damage by the Death Ward. Is it enough? Yes, the Meepo is going down. A second time, there's still a buyback here. And all this is a one for three trade at the moment. It's a one for four as the Earthshaker is going down. And well, the creeps, however. The creeps, they are pushing into the base so much and now we have to check the buybacks. Buybacks is the most important thing and 25 seconds and we have a buyback on the uh, Meepo and he has more than enough gold. Like he has 4.8k just like that. So in the end, Aladdin taking kind of a bad fight but the funny part is if there was just one Rex left in Lion's base, the game would be over right now. But there's not. Those mega creeps, they just give them a headache. So they're really trying their best to do something here, but it's it's not really working. But at the moment, Era, like pushing the creeps in and back to protection is not on with the AC and everything. Damage is quite interesting. They force the buybacks on the Meepo, uh, Meepo and on the Earthshaker. Let's see, the Meepo already in the base here. He wants to go for a base race. There is no cliff. Still, A Mother going in, Era going in. They want to defend it. And oh my god, Meepo, I think this is a big. Big mistake. They're gonna get that kill on the on the Meepo, and I think I think Aladdin with this split push attempt sort of thing, they just gave away that game. Right now, Era can just go mid. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. I'm not sure that's actually happening. Let's see. At the moment, Era is really trying to. He's really, really trying to, but he has no blink dagger. The blink dagger in the past was always his guarantee for a nice and clean initiation. He went for a Divine Rapier instead. Uh, I'm not sure that works out. In the mid, however, they push the creeps onto the high ground, which means he can go for whatever he wants. And he's always trying to go for the tier 4 tower, but at the moment, I'm, I'm just looking forward that he could actually get their axes down as well, just as a security. Maybe that's the slow approach, I know, but... I don't know, with the current damage, I think he even can go for backdoor protection. AC, Rapier, that's the right thing to go. Come on, hit those Rexes. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's it. That's range tracks. And he's going for more. They're not gonna use the cliff on this range tracks. They're gonna save it. But Era, oh, taking quite some damage. Still, he's surviving. And at least they get something done. The Titan, however, they, oh, they wanna chase the the poor ancient apparition. Before he dies, does he blow his ice blast? At the moment, nope. He's not even dying. However, there's Era. Oh, the Titan really wants to find him. The Meepo is back. Which is the dangerous news for Lions, but the good news is he still has no buyback for another 5 minutes. However, other buybacks are coming soon back. The Titaner, for example, he just needs to go. And I don't know, what is Aladdin going for? Like, do we actually see, like, some crazy, I don't know, 2 hours game with Mega Creeps versus Mega Creeps or so? I, I don't know what's coming, but... We have to look at the items. What what kind of improvement is possible for each team here? I, I don't see too much being able to be done. I mean, the Earthshaker can definitely upgrade something. That's Aghanim Scepter, Shivas could be done on him. Uh, Happiness could go for some single damage. Oh, but Era being found here at the moment. The right clicks are so real. That's just two hits for a Skyrath Mage, but Era, he has to go back because there the Meepo is already on the way and he wants to hunt that Clockwork. At the moment, the damage on him is however so huge at the moment. He's spreading out his damage, so Meepo is just going down. I think this time he would have been better by split pushing again. He's going down again only for 60 seconds. Now, a kingdom for a Necro or something. Titanta, he's being chased here by Ancient Apparition and he has Maledict on him. One more Maledict tick? And it's just enough. I can't believe that. I can't believe this, that he actually died from it. How big was that? I mean, the ma Maledict damage is magical damage. And just as the next Maledict tick came in, Ancient Apparition did the Ice Vortex, so there was the increased magic damage by 30%. Block Recover, oh, they're gonna get the Earthshaker kill in the mid, and now... Oh my god, are they actually throwing it? Aladdin throw a game. 
with mega creeps on their side. So let's see it. Creeps enter high crown. Only two defenders. Only the elder titan. But this lark, he can finish the tier four tower. There it is. One, two, three. They still have a cliff. Ten seconds on the meeple. All the buybacks. Titan. He's gonna use both the ravage. There's number one. They keep on hitting the throne. Look at this. All this damage at the moment on Era. What they need, they need to kill Era within seconds. Otherwise, this is bad news. But nope, they're gonna keep hitting the throne. Lions, they do it. I can't believe it. They do it. This <laughs> is what a game. This was definitely worth the cast, guys. I mean, they win 2-0 in the best of three year in the I League uh, Europe uh, A qualifiers. But what a game. What a game. Lions versus Aladdin. Game number two, definitely something worth to watch. And you can watch that, of course, on our YouTube. That is Hefla TV on YouTube. And of course, my name is Hefla Mok. You can find me on Twitter, Hefla TV on Twitter as well as Facebook and whatnot. See you soon, guys. Uh, Coucher, Mike, Grandis, and Rage, they, they're going to be soon online. 14 and 16 CET, which is in 5 minutes and 2 hours. Uh, BOCE, GG League, Join Dota League, all of that is t on today's schedule. So I'm looking forward to see you all there. See ya, guys.